Hello everyone and welcome to the brand new Thursday Live Lessons with new sets, with mm -hmm. new microphones, but we have the same handsome guests. Please welcome <laughs> Mr. Mike Odom. What's up, guys? My name is Aldrin Guerrero. Welcome to Thursday Live Lessons. I'm joined as per usual by Mr. Aaron, the voice now. Come say what's up, Aaron? What's up? And Kahai, the legend, Fergan. Say what's up, Kahai? What's up? So Magic Mike Odo is here. That means it is Music Theory Week, is, is what it is. But you know, before we get into the nitty-gritty of things, I heard because oh, for those of you folks who don't know, Mike Odo works at a um, at a music store here on Koi. Could you I say did. which music store you work at? I could. Just, just Kauai case, Music and Sound. Just in case people want to go check it out. We've had people from Ukula on the Ground come and check out your store and stuff and said hi. That's, so that's really Indeed awesome. they have actually <laughs> There was a guy who came in, and I was not wearing my hat or my glasses, <laughs> so I looked like this. Mm -hmm. And he actually recognized who I was by my voice. Just by the voice. Uh, his, uh, That's pretty cool. Podcast listener. Or <laughs> I forget, who, but he came that week to the show. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So something. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of people coming to your store, I heard a certain billion with a B. Oh, certain billionaire. Came to your store. Let's talk about that just for a few minutes. Okay, so Man, I was well, tell I, the story like you you waited on him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. To be honest, I wasn't there because I would have reckoned, I would have remembered. This story. So guy you comes to the store just for the pods for the you know, for the story, for the story scene. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Nah, nah, so our co my coworkers yeah. Tom and Noah were working, mm -hmm. and so this guy comes in with his wife and his daughter. And he goes, hey, can we help you? And the guy's like, I'm just going to find a guitar. So he goes, looks around. He finds a really pretty nice Martin guitar. Mm -hmm. It's like a almost $2,000 guitar. Just pulls it out and says, I'll take this. And <laughs> Tom is kind of looking like, I know who that guy is. But he's actually more looking at the kid, the guy's daughter because she has a lay on. She's dropping flowers everywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> yeah, so he's like, this and then he kid. looks at the guy. He's like, I know this guy's face. And so he goes up and he starts to pay. So, and so Noah, who doesn't pay attention, at he doesn't all, watch. He doesn't look at the recent headlines. Well, here's the thing, Noah, and this will be important later. Mm -hmm. Noah is very not social media. He doesn't do any social media. He has mm -hmm. no Facebook, no Instagram, mm -hmm. no nothing. Yeah. So he gets the guitar, he starts ringing it up, and he says, "You know, we need to take a name because it, um, get, instrument has a warranty. Mm -hmm. So we need the name and a phone number to yeah. help the warranty." So I said, "So what's?" So what's your name? And the guy goes, Zuckerberg. <laughs> and Noah's like, yeah, how do you spell that? <laughs> Tom on the other side has now recognized this guy yeah, yeah. as Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, and he's like, him. first of all, how do you not know how to spell Zuckerberg? <laughs> there's not that many different spellings of it. Matter of fact, there's not one. There's one. Can you use it a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> I am Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So finally, the guy, yeah. so he looks, and so Noah, blind, he's like, so uh, how do you spell that? And the wife just goes, you know what? Here, here's my credit card. Put it under my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Same last name, I'm guessing. No, actually, oh. she has a different last name. Oh. I think she kept her maiden name probably probably for that very reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So she can have like her credit cards and, and right, IDs right. and stuff without like, that. Huh, Zuckerberg, eh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be honest. It's a yeah. it's a famous name, and if you right, right. you know, right. if you if you're trying to go incognito, yeah. it's a good idea to have someone who doesn't have that last right. name with you. Yeah. I mean, I go yeah. to Mexico and people can't stop asking if I wrestle. You know. Exactly. <laughs> Are you Eddie's brother? Are you Eddie's? But, but that's the reason why, like, a lot of celebrities come to Kauai in the first place. Yeah. Is because oh, absolutely. People, yeah. people are oblivious. <laughs> yeah. Well, just like the other guy who was in our store <laughs> on Saturday, you know. Who, who's this? Timothy Schmidt of the Timothy Eagles. Schmidt. Yeah. You know. Which he, you own a base of. I do have one of his old bases. <laughs> I was super Gotta remind stoked. everyone that they're, they're good friends. Therefore, Timothy Schmidt is... My friend, too, <laughs> by association, by association, yeah. like, two degrees to Tim. <laughs> but yeah, I just you know want to let people know that yeah, Koi Music and Sounds billionaires with a B <laughs> shop yeah. there. That's that's how high class. On, <laughs> on the and on the chat, Jim asked where on Kauai is Koi Music and Sound. Uh we're in Kapa, exact address four dash one one seven Kuhio Highway. <laughs> so much, number much, is 
823-8000. Um, <laughs> but for those of you who are either visiting Kauai, not sure where it is, like most things on Kauai, I will give you directions in places to look. Yeah. <laughs> so if you the... leave the airport, turn right. <laughs> keep driving. All the way down. Keep driving, keep driving, keep driving. About a half an hour later, if you look on your right, you'll see a Burger King and a used car lot, and then my store is the next one after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Funny enough, that most people Works actually, every time. It, it's much easier to find it, mm -hmm. that than to trying to like Google Maps it mm -hmm. or something like that. It's... It's a store with like Sennheiser in the poster or whatever. <laughs> or you guys have it's like not a couple a Sennheiser store. <laughs> you guys have like a couple uh, music like logos, Bose right? Like stuff, in the yeah. window and stuff. So uh, it's they should mostly bows. That's Bo the okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you... no, I'll ask you this later. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I was like, I'm having problems with my not, Bose system. <laughs> not, not, for the, not for the podcast. Not for the podcast. I'll ask you later. I'll ask you later. So um, that was a nice story. Thank you for that. Entertaining. That's entertaining. Um, this is oh, like a real I should, podcast. I should, I should. I should make. I should point out. If you would like to see the inside of my store, at least vaguely, watch the new play along for December. Oh, because yeah. it, right. it was shot there. Oh, did you watch story. it last? Night? I did. Oh, how, what do you think? Uh, just say it on camera, please. <laughs> I thought he looked cute. It, uh, hey, I mean, I, 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 think, I think it was uh, me. Uh, it was weird that you guys recorded that play along without wearing pants. I don't, I don't know what the purpose <laughs> well, of that was. Could, that's that's a that's dress code for quiet music. <laughs> <laughs> That was the what are you I talking about? That's how we're recording this podcast now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and then, and then you don't know. You don't even know what me and yeah, Aaron. You're wearing. the weird one for wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> just the sign. Just pants. <laughs> no, just, we had to match up, right? Like you didn't wear pants. I wore pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a rebel, this guy. You yeah. need to see HR. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so God, enough. you think we did meatball subs or something? <laughs> no, for the yucks. Let's get to the yukes. Okay, that, that doesn't work. No, that was kind of lame. Let me try that again. Enough with the funnies. Let's get to the strums. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, okay, I want to stop trying. Let's All just right. get to the questions. <laughs> Let's get to the questions. Kahai, give us something. Uh, so this was from Lao Gao, and okay. he he posted this in our like our forum. So mm. he said. Uh, I've been trying to learn Dan and Shay's song Speechless for my wife, mm -hmm. as she loves that tune. I consulted Ultimate Guitar uh, for the chords, and the chords seem correct. Mm -hmm. um, there's a part about key, but we'll, we won't talk about that. The verse starts off traditionally with uh, 1, 3, 4, 2. Mm -hmm. Then there's a bridge that starts off with 6, 5, 4. Um, and then there's the first of a few F minor chords in the song. And then later, there is even a B flat chord. My question is, uh, is this just an unorthodox song? What does the F minor and B flat chord sound like? Or why does it sound, why does the F minor and B flat chord sound like it fits so well in the C major chord family? Is there some alternating key changes going on that I'm not detecting? So. Okay. Yeah. So this is, of course, yeah. why they brought me. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's okay. go over the chords. Okay, so, so that, the, that everybody can kind of know. Yeah, so it's the in the in the key of C. Key of C. Well, we're <laughs> assuming that it's in the key of C. Yeah. Well, it's the original's in key of C sharp. I think, yeah, yeah, um, but but that's that, why just for the yeah. sake of you know simplicity, simplicity we're just talking about uh, it in, in the key of C. So uh, can I get the other the other page? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, cool. So it goes uh, it goes C, and then to E minor. Is that one six right? And it goes F. D minor, so pretty you know pretty standard. So those are all in the, chords in, in the, the chord family. Chord family it goes back to C, E minor, F, and D minor again. So it does it does that for you know for two times for the verse, and then on the bridge is where it gets kind of you know weird for them, uh, for Lao Gao. So A minor goes it's always on a night like tonight, which is G, and then if I think you can read my mind, which is F, and because when you look at me with those eyes, it's an F minor. So let's okay. uh, let's just go all the way to that part. So let so we'll start with this. So in the verse section, mm -hmm. all you're really everything you're getting there is within the key of C. Yes. Okay. It's true that you probably don't always use that E minor, which is the third the three mm -hmm. chord, mm -hmm. as much. Mm -hmm. But I think as we covered in a previous one, when you look over chords and you you make the you make chords off of a scale. Each scale degree is always going to be the same type of chord. So if you're if you have a major scale, 
the first chord that you build off of it using that key is always going to be major. Mm -hmm. Second chord is always going to be minor. Third chord is always going to be minor. Fourth chord is major. Fifth chord depends on whether you're using three or four note chords. If you're using a three note, mm -hmm. it's basically going to sound major. If you're going to use a four note chord, it's going to sound uh, like a dominant seventh chord. Six is minor, seven is half diminished, and then you're back to the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the E minor easily fits in as the correct three chord. Okay, the F is four, D minor is two, mm -hmm. and then even when you go to the bridge, or I, I would consider that more is of a pre chorus. Really yeah, pre chorus. Six. Yeah. Um, the A minor is simply the sixth chord in the key of C. Okay. So all those do fit. The G is five. Mm -hmm. So in, in, this, in this sense, they're pretty much only using three note type chords or what we call triad chords. Um, and when you come to the end of it and you see that F minor, now that's probably the first place you were kind of like, oh, why are they doing that? Mm -hmm. um, if you hearken back a few weeks to our chord episode, substitution video. Episode 28. Yeah. Episode 28. Episode 28. Yeah. One of the ways we talked about adding in doing a chord substitution to just add some sound or color to what you do is to simply change any chord from major to minor. Mm -hmm. Okay? And backwards. Yeah, yeah, you could go from minor to major too. Mm -hmm. um, it's more oftentimes you'll hear it used in a piece of music from major to minor. Mm -hmm. But either one works. And, yeah. and all it's really doing is as long as it fits with the melody. Mm -hmm. Now, so the uh, I just listened to the song pretty much for the first time right before. But if I'm remembering it correctly, he's singing it over one note. It's mm -hmm. like at the end. Mm -hmm. It's over that word eyes. So what's happening here is he's picking the note eyes that would work mm -hmm. in an F major chord. But then he was also singing the same note that would work in an F minor chord. Because you're only changing a few notes mm -hmm. in the chord. So he's picking something that would make sense over mm -hmm. both chords. Mm -hmm. And so he's simply changing... Yeah that note, uh, changing the chord from major to minor in order for it to add some color. So it doesn't mm. also just sound like an F major yeah. that's the whole just time. held yeah. for yeah. like a bunch yeah. of measures. So for uh, for example, you know, as an example, in this in this case, say, you know, it goes from the, it's it's from the F to the F minor. So right. they, you know, establish that F major first and then be, be, uh, before it gets to the minor. So if they were singing like an F note, for example, mm -hmm. that'll say consistent F. So you can hit that same note and it'll be in both chords, both so it'll chords, still be okay. Yeah. So you're adding the color later on in that second chord, but if you hold that note, it'll be fine with, with both. So that's what Mike is saying. Or C, you know, the C is another one. C would there, be another you know. one that says F. So just as a, a side note, mm -hmm. um, so when you, I saw that at the bottom of your message. So when you're thinking in terms of something you might want to try and do, if you're going to take up the song challenge too, might be that might be a cool thing to do if your yeah, melody line cool. mm -hmm. happens to have a couple of long extended notes that's a substitution you could use to add some just a little bit of extra color a little bit of something to keep the motion of the song going because if in that case they held that a, same f major chord for like two three four measures in a row there's a certain amount of kind of monotony that's gonna mm -hmm. that's gonna strike your mm -hmm. ears mm -hmm. whereas if you change that chord quality for that mm -hmm. f to that f minor mm -hmm. Your ears are going to like, ooh, something else has happened, even though your melody hasn't changed. The, right? Do you have to resolve it on the next chord? So, for example, it goes to F and then F minor. And then right here in this song, it goes back to C. So, it kind of just resolves in I, that C. Kinda, I kind of yeah. feel like it works really well at the end of phrases, right? Like, where it kind of like... Yes. And mm -hmm. with this song, right? Like, it, it just kind of... The guy holds that, that part mm -hmm. and there's like a clear cut before the next, like, the chorus starts up where... It starts with C, so it's like almost yeah. like yeah, it's brings done. It, brings yeah. it back, and then because what I, what I've noticed, what sounds really cool with that, if you go to the F, um, to get from the F to the F minor is an A flat, and then going to the C is that G. So you have this like walking yeah. down, comes, come, so it actually it sounds really nice. That's why I was yeah. asking about resolution because it's going to resolve to that C, which then has that G note. So you have an A A flat to G, right? Kind of walk down. So to kind of address both both things, yes, yeah, because. Even though you're substituting the F minor for the F major, you're still putting it in the same place mm -hmm. as the four chord. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. means that has to go back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could move up to somewhere else, but it really mm -hmm. wouldn't sound quite as, as good. It mm -hmm. wouldn't sound as good. I mean, yeah. technically, if you play F, ma play F major, then F minor, and then go up to G. Yeah, it's like... 
See, and, 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 to keep, and see, yeah, and what, and even resolve. then, what's yeah. happening is I mean, you still it have still, it still key, sounds yeah. it still sounds like it needs to resolve. Yeah, mm-hmm. it still needs. So to you could go from the F major to the F minor, mm-hmm. but then even if you go up to a G or something like yeah. that, you're still you have to bring it back. You're to still going to end up mm-hmm. having to come back to C. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have that real feeling of like, kind of floating in the air, mm-hmm. and especially in country music now. Mm-hmm. There's certain there's there's a lot of pe- uh, composers like in jazz or like contemporary classical music that would definitely let that thing float for a while, mm-hmm. but country music doesn't work like that. Country this is also something we talked about of musical maturity, knowing what to do, mm-hmm. understanding the style of music you're playing. Mm-hmm. In country music, chord scales, all that stuff like that, that is all secondary to a country musician. A country musician's first and foremost idea is to tell a story, mm-hmm. okay? And then everything else he's doing, all these chord things and cool chord tricks, it's all about how to accentuate that story. Mm-hmm. No matter what country song you listen to, even even the ones that people just cringe when they hear. Don't. <laughs> even Achy Breaky Heart tells a story. Hey, I love yeah. that song. Isn't it? Hey. Leave uh, Billy Ray Cyrus <laughs> <involved>. <laughs> No, it's a bad song. <laughs> isn't isn't that like, or they they call like the chords, the open chords, like cowboy chords, because it's like, you know, simple chords that you just you're playing, and then you're not really like thinking about the chords themselves. You're thinking more about everything else that's going on top of the chords. Right. Yeah. No, I, in that sense, the for people where we're from, you know, the the closest thing I can say that it's a, a really good approximation. Country music and Hawaiian music have a lot in common mm-hmm. because it's a lot of one four fives. Well, it's a lot of one four fives. <laughs> that's true. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, in Hawaiian music, it's the story that they're telling you. Mm-hmm. Especially in traditional Hawaiian music, if yep. you listen to traditional yeah. hula awana or chants like, it is a story, and the story is what's important. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't tell the story right, you haven't done the song right. You could you could have the most amazing guitar bass yeah. ukulele percussion parts of it no but if there's no story yeah. there you're not really playing hawaiian music because mm. that's what hawaiian music is and country <laughs> music yeah. is all about that too i was gonna say that i want to be the first one to write a song that has like no story <laughs> taro 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 <laughs> taro taro poke <laughs> I, well kalo no like that taro kalo kalo so poke. <laughs> If you see Aldrin beat up on the street, <laughs> that's what next happened. to an old Hawaiian lady, you will know that he finished that song. It would, <laughs> it would definitely be an old Hawaiian lady too. It would. A guy would they, be there laughing across the street. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. For for this, uh, it, it seems to me that the that four chord uh, substitution to a minor like that happens way more often than any other i think yeah. you know like, any uh, other major to a minor substitution absolutely yeah. so it, it's it's an easy way to change the, the mood you know yeah yeah, yeah. also without I, without fundamentally mm-hmm. changing the song because yeah. so, we talked about like uh like home and destination and whatever so like yeah. you're not at home you're at your destination but then your destination changes like mood like in, you can think of it as like something happened, like you went there and something happened there, like that yeah. shook things up. Yeah, like, but then eventually home. you come back home. Yeah, and you come the back C, home. Right. C yeah. kind of mm-hmm. mm-hmm. would stay the same. Which is really cool. Uh, G would always kind of lead back to home yeah. anyway. So the the four major mm-hmm. chord mm-hmm. is easily changed mm-hmm. to a minor right. and right. often changed uh, to a minor. To, to give a, a, a an analogy that's like again based off of it's kind of like if you're driving out to the North Shore and you just take a deep, you know, you have your destination Mm -hmm. you're going to ka beach or something like that and on the way you see like the botanical garden and you just you know you you just just make a quick swerve off to go check it out and you drive past like wow that's really cool and then you keep on the way back to the beach well it's (laughs) the same thing it's it's a detour you're taking Mm -hmm. but hopefully Mm -hmm. as a good right it's a detour that pays off in it that it adds some value, some to quality trip. to yeah. the trip and of itself. Mm-hmm. And just to address what you were saying too, Kai, yeah, um, the major to minor thing actually doesn't work as well if you just decide to throw it in the middle of a phrase. <laughs> it, it, it would just sound it would just sound weird at the end of phrases. Also, generally because at the end of phrases we're holding notes. Oh, okay. So yeah. it just it since you're already holding a note, it's like makes sense to just like oh just change the chord behind what it, exactly. you're playing. Exactly. You, because if you were in the middle mm. of singing a melody, it would be much more treacherous to try and figure out a way 
to sing a melody that would be major and in the major and the minor key. Because mm. you're doing, mm. you're dealing with moving notes. Yeah. Whereas if you're dealing with maybe only mm -hmm. one or two <clears throat> notes, you know, it's a lot easier to figure that part out. Mm. Yeah. You know? Well, like uh, an example that I can come up with that doesn't like hold the note is um, Sleepwalk. Because it goes to that, ba -da -ba -da 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 -da. so it's like a moving note. It's not like he holds a note. Uh, oh, that's true. However, the difference between that is mm. is that the melody has then gone into a into minor. a minor. Mm, I see, so I see. you so you so you're going out of the the major scale and mm. into the minor scale, right. just uh, altering or altering just the, a split second. Yeah, or just yeah. altering the melody in of itself mm. because you're definitely using yeah. notes within that lick. Yeah, because I just that, thought of that. That like it's the same chords basically, like C A minor F and then F minor. It goes. Yeah. it's the mm -hmm. same. You know, it's the same chords, um, but. In that sense, not like, you know, not like this song. Um, what is this song called? Speechless. Unlike Speechless, where they hold that note. And for it, the uh, melody yeah, line. Yeah, for the melody line where it has, like, the note from F major and F minor. This one, like, the uh, the melody line will... Just like, follows will, the F minor. Yeah, the melody yeah. line. Yeah, and so that's the biggest difference here. When you try to do that substitution, what you're doing is trying to find one note to hold that will work over both chords. Within this one, the composer just decided he wanted to go from a major melody mm. into a minor melody, mm. which also completely works, by the way, for those of you trying to think about the song challenge. <laughs> I'm going to keep relating anytime we talk about theory stuff. Are you, because are you going to be here next week? No. Uh, you're going to be here next week. I was like, are you going to do the challenge too? Because we, we, we show our songs next week. Oh. Have you seen the uh, last week's episode? I, I did. Zero? Oh, yeah? I did. I listened to yours. I listened to yours. I listened to both of yours. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. The Bowser is one was fun. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wait. So actually, there, there's but, still no. more to this question. Oh, okay, right? okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So uh, let, let's, you know, let's go. So on, in the chorus, I'm speechless. So C. And it goes, so it basically goes back to the, you know, C to E minor to F. But then this time, you know, instead of going to the D minor, it goes back to the F minor, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. Then C, E minor, F, F minor, and then when you go, so I'm speechless, C, B flat, F. And then okay. C. So the B flat doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. In the, the B, yeah. you know, okay, in the so that's family. probably the other place we're really looking at, that B flat. Okay, so there's, so there's two ways I can explain this. Mm -hmm. One, the simple way. It sounded good to the guy. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. I mean, fair, in, in, fair. In, in some, in, yeah. in a, in a very layman's term, yeah. the thing is, if, if it sounds good to you, again, this is what we talked about with improvisation and your writing and everything like that. If the chord sounds right to you, <laughs> then, it's the right then use it. Oh. Yeah. There's no, there's no such thing as a wrong chord. If to the composer, mm -hmm. that's what he mm -hmm. wanted to hear. Okay. So, so I was I was actually telling Aaron that we already have somebody who submitted to the song challenge mm -hmm. from last week, and what they they said like, oh, I think I might have gone into the key of G though instead of staying in C. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> but then I was like, oh, but it Nobody sounds cares, way better like <laughs> yeah. in G. I like yeah. that you, yeah. you yeah. went to G instead of like staying in C, and then mm -hmm. kind of running into like the same problems we were talk just talking about where. If he stayed in C, he mm -hmm. would have had to use a minor chord. Mm -hmm. And it just would have sounded like, it's like, oh, this kind of kills it. Like, there's yeah. no resolution. Mm -hmm. So by going to G, it's like, oh, this this makes it sound way better. And I think he, like, for him, it probably was one of the things where it's just like, oh, I'm just yeah. going to do what sounds good, right? I yeah, and I mean, like, uh, we just had Landslide as our um, songs made easy. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that, where it's like the song is in C, then it goes to G, like mm -hmm. all, all of a sudden the chorus is G, and then it goes it, back to C again. It's hard mm -hmm. to detect, right? Because yeah. it's like only one note difference, one and only note. like the chord is like a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But if, if besides that, you could just yeah. say like, it's oh. a matter of F and F sharp That's yeah. like between like yeah. C yeah. and G. Oh, wait, so what was the other yeah. explanation? So, okay. Yeah. So, so that was the, the layman's term. Okay. So in a, so in a musical sense, mm -hmm. what you can do if you want to... If you have a key, whatever key you're playing in, the B flat is what is the four of four. Yes. Okay, so what you can do. What does that mean? The four yeah, you're, you're... <laughs> trying to you're... set you up here. Okay, I'm so like we, the ball, buddy. so like we, so like we <laughs> talked about. There's the one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord. So what you can do to substitute would be take the four chord, treat that as one, and use the four of that. So if we look, 
F is the four chord in C, C, D, E, F, right? Mm -hmm. And then if we think of F as the first chord, it's F, G, A, B flat. Mm -hmm. So what it's doing is mm -hmm. it uses the four chord of the four chord. And usually then what happens is, and then what happens from that mm -hmm. is, if you look at what happens is, it actually becomes um, a whole step down from the root. Yeah. yeah. Okay? A B flat is a whole yeah. step down from C. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, it's almost like that, the thing we, the other thing we were doing with uh, substitutions where we just keep adding on extensions. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that same thing, yeah. but not quite. Right. It, I mean, in the, an example of this is in Hawaiian music where they have the five or the five for the vamps. Yes. But it's in music, would you call that a major two? Hmm. You could. You know? You could. Uh, I, it's a I, minor two. Usually it's a minor two. So could it be called a oh so for those people that don't know what i'm talking about it's so in uh, in this particular song in speechless it's b flat f to c and we've said that that's the four to the four now in hawaiian music the vamps are basically five to the five which is taking the same exact concept that they did for four to four but they did it with the five chord instead so it's like if you've ever heard that and i'm sure you have if you listen to hawaiian music at all this D7 is the five chord to the G7, which is the five chord to the one. Yeah, and but that's it can why it kind of works. Yeah, that's why it works. But in music, there's also such thing as the major second, and that's is that a substitution, like a form of substitution, or what would, what yeah. would you classify? Yeah, I mean, I, you could. It, 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 well, I mean, in a broad sense, anytime you replace a chord with another chord, mm -hmm. it's a chord substitution. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, how deep into that hole you want to go? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we covered. You know. About three or four different ones in mm -hmm. episode twenty-eight, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but you know that that basic those are the basic types. You can scratch the surf. You can that's scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. If you start digging down into that, yeah. you can find all these other rules. The five of the five uh, of the five. <laughs> yeah, you know you can keep going. Yeah, or I, mm -hmm. I think in one of our early episodes with mm -hmm. you, you talked about key centers too, like how you're looking for a key center. So even though it's like going all out of key technically, it's like you're still kind of okay because a majority of it, right, is the same. Right, right. And, and it kind of seems like it. It uh, and the the examples you use were is like for jazz, right, where it can go completely off key, and you're like, oh no, what's gonna happen? But if you have the key center, it's like I kind of have an idea, yeah. right? Right. But for this one, it seems like uh, the that B flat, it's like the four of the F. But then also the five of F is C too, right? Yeah, so you can easily bring it back to the mm -hmm. original so key. So going from C to B yeah. flat to F, it kind of like goes temporarily, like it, it fits. You're, you're kind of yeah. moving into a different key temporarily, yeah. mm -hmm. but not really yeah. in the sense that you're not changing the melody. Mm -hmm. right. no, so, so I guess a, a kind of a, mm -hmm. a quick and easy way to figure out whether you're, you're really um, using chord substitutions or key changes is what is the melody doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if the melody isn't really changing into that new key mm -hmm. then you're just using chord substitutions yeah mm -hmm. if you find that the melody again like sleepwalk yeah i was just gonna... okay that's almost that's, <laughs> that's what you would mostly key. consider like a, key, a quick mm -hmm. key change because you're literally now using chords and keys and that are completely yeah. out of that, that and, and landslide too right the chorus is totally in g mm -hmm. Whereas the the yeah. verse is totally in C, right? And yeah. and I mean, with even with this, with the B uh, B flat to or C B flat and F, yeah, you can uh, you know you can use that F in uh, you know in, in B flat, you yeah, know, and then to the to the F. C, so yeah. goes back to the C, yeah. So you can and you can keep that and use that as the the one note that you're holding, and that actually kind of. Mm -hmm. It's, it's one of those things that happens more in country music too, right? That mm -hmm. kind of that substitution. We actually did a um an a tutorial for Danny's song and Danny's song does that as yeah, well. That's right, that's right. So like Danny's song is in the key of D, but like it right off the C. back it goes to a C which is not in the key of D. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a D C B minor E seven A. Yeah. So it's like kind of um that's just what they were going mm -hmm. for. And it does have that country kind mm -hmm. of twang to it. Yeah. Um, by by doing that that substitution. So, yeah. speaking of Danny's song, you've met the uh, composer for Danny's song, haven't you? I have. Yeah. Close personal friend. Close I friend. wouldn't say that. But <laughs> I'd like to say that, but I. Can't. 
He's actually one of the other signatures on that bass. <laughs> oh, Kenny oh, Lawrence. Oh, wow. Yeah, Do you, Kenny. I don't care what Mike said about you. <laughs> I think you're a good guy. He actually watches. Just joking, Kenny. <laughs> me, well, me and Aaron passed Kenny Loggins at Nam. Oh, oh yeah. That? yeah. <laughs> okay. We saw him uh, signing uh, stuff, and we we're like, "Oh, Kenny Loggins," and then we walked away. <laughs> and then we continued on. <laughs> oh, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Just give a just nice. My oh. own, just for my own giggles, there is a video of me on YouTube somewhere over playing my shoulder of when I was playing Footloose with him. Ooh, oh, it's, nice! It's like one of the best videos. I, even though you can't, <laughs> even though you don't really know it's me because you only see it from like from here. Uh-huh. But you see the hat and you see the bass, you know who it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> signature, signature. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of speaking of which, like I brought two Santa hats to the uh, to to filming the play along and stuff. I'm like, all right, Mike, we're gonna have matching hats. Mike is like, no way you're gonna even wear that. Like I'm not wearing that. I'm like, oh. I do it once a year. That's it. <laughs> yeah. By the, oh, by the way, uh, you showed me that question, and I have to say, uh, who is that? Under- Lao Gao or uh, uh, Mark. Mark G in the bottom. Mark G. The like, fact that you want to be the Hokage of Upla- because <laughs> they did win by Akiboshi. Like this, bro. Bro. <laughs> bro. Don't don't even for the <laughs> don't even. Yeah, don't even. You know what I mean? Exactly. For the totally. uh, right for the original chest. uh song challenge, he remade Akiboshi into the key that we picked E flat, right? I think something like that. Yeah. So he it was kind of it was pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's... <laughs> anyway, okay. So hopefully that answers the question. Those were the two that was basically you know like they yeah. seemed kind of weird, seemed kind of out of place for yeah. that key, but. Um, you know, the the best way to describe it is like if it sounds good. If know, it sounds good, it sounds good. It, it sounds good. I mean, it's that's like the perfect world for the Beatles, right? Like they didn't yeah. really know too much music theory. Just like, they hey, this sounds know. good, so we'll just you know we'll do this. Well, you know, and keep in mind too, if you if you get into a little bit more music history, realize that what is acceptable sound mm-hmm. or is considered to be acceptable mm-hmm. has massively grown over the last yeah. several hundred years. True. Like eight, like eight hundred years ago, unison was considered the only acceptable <laughs> form of music. Why are you singing a different note for me? <laughs> no, 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 literally, yeah. and even like yeah. that's why if you, if anybody's ever heard Gregorian chant, that's why it sounds like that because mm-hmm. they considered even even octaves, yeah, not acceptable. Yeah, don't that's all. That. That's also why the monks were all dudes because obviously if they're women, it would be kind of weird to try to get them to sing the same note, uh-huh. and. It was years mm-hmm. before octaves and then fourths and fifths were considered to be like acceptable other notes you could use. Mm-hmm. Um, we've covered this a lot uh, in score substitutions, the tritone thing. Mm-hmm. That actually used to have a Latin name, or it still does, because it's a cool sounding name. So it's the tritone name? <laughs> no. Diabolica, uh, Diabolicus in Musica. Oh, like the devil's music. The devil <laughs> in music. <laughs> Because, Isn't that, but that's like a misquote also, right? I think like uh, the whole idea that like, oh, if you play this, it's like the devil chord is like somebody, I think it's misquoted from Latin where the person was just saying like, oh, this is a weird chord. Not necessarily. No. Devil. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. I, oh, I don't. I don't. I don't. Mike right now. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think the monks actually le- legit thought if I played a C and then a G flat together, the devil that was, was going to come popping yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the same time, though. It's such a jarring sound that it, it in, to them, it like broke the serenity of what they were trying to sing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that analogy yeah. is like still, or it still makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. The devil's chord, but yeah. But that that was, and, and legitimately in Western European music, that was probably the last interval mm-hmm. that was able to be put in. Mm-hmm. Like... They were okay with seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths, <laughs> so the whole thing. But the tritone was the last one to be accepted for use, you know. Mm-hmm. And and even by the time and then by the time that happened, it really wasn't necessarily the church pushing forward music because yes. yeah. even until the seventeen and eighteen hundreds, especially in the seventeens, almost everything in music was church based. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Bach, who's like for a lot of people is the god of Western music. Everything for him was church music. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that everything he wrote was basically written around like some aspect of his what he perceived to be his relationship with God. Mm. His credo was every note for the glory of God. And he spent most of his life working for churches. That's I mean, mm-hmm. 
people seem to get the idea of like Mo, uh, Bach as being this guy who like was like the lone composer in his tower, mm-hmm. just writing stuff to write stuff. And that wasn't true. Yeah. He, most of the time, he was either an organist or a church le- or a choir leader mm-hmm. or both for any number of different churches in Europe. And that's so. Is it just influenced by that, or is it he wrote stuff that was actually for church? It was wrote. He wrote stuff for church. Yeah, didn't, mm-hmm. Like I, musicians wouldn't I, make yeah. money outside of the church. Basically, I, I, I think <laughs> yeah, no, church. really, yeah. Dude, like really. Yeah, until yeah. I mean, there were a few guys, but outside of like church positions like that, mm-hmm. it was pretty much like if <laughs> you, you have two choices, you could either be yeah. a church musician. Right. Or you could be like the wandering minstrel. Yeah, uh, you can't yeah. wander with your organ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 set up little... shop here and yeah. a busk. They didn't, and just... <laughs> they didn't have Casios back then. <laughs> See, and if they had the mini yeah. Casios, set they might in have an organ the world. world. <laughs> yeah, he would you have know? been like the the best guitarist of all time. <laughs> but I mean that that's true because if you think of, and you can think and you can see it directly in the music. Because most of those guys who were quote unquote serious composers, even though they weren't considered to be serious composers, a lot of them weren't considered to be that at the time. Mm-hmm. They were just composers. Mm-hmm. You know, they, this guy writes music for the church. So those are mostly, uh, well, piano didn't even really exist in Bach's time, but like harpsichord, clavinet, mm-hmm. uh, clavichord, sorry, not clavinet, that's Stevie Wonder. Um, <laughs> organ. I mean, you can't move an organ. If anybody's ever seen an actual church organ, yeah, yeah. you have to assemble it. Unless you're Superman, I can I can move an organ. I can oh, I mean, <laughs> except for Cot, I've seen he him is do, a legend. I've seen him do it. You know, but then you think about what would be considered minstrel music mm-hmm. of that time, and that's all lute, mm-hmm. viol, violin, or what became violin. You know, I mean, honestly, if the ukulele had existed at that time. In Europe, yeah, that yeah. that would have been a that would have been a total Ukulele minstrel. underground would have been a thing. <laughs> yeah, just uh, in box yeah. day, yeah, minstrel kind of. <laughs> but that would have been that, yeah. that's the type of instrument. You think about what was considered serious music, yeah. and then what was considered minstrel yeah. or or like music for the the mass people. It's all most of the mass music is like lute and guitar, early guitar, or or instruments of that nature that were able to be easily moved and packed from town to town to town Mm -hmm. and that's how guys would make their money they would it was basically like the Grateful Dead they were just like a never ending tour (laughs) (laughs) you know he'd go to a town and he'd play and he'd play and he'd play until he was run out of town Mm -hmm. or he made enough money to to finance his Mm -hmm. move to the next town and Mm -hmm. that's what they did Mm -hmm. you know that was their entire most of those modern day minstrels yeah well pretty much I mean Grateful Dead was pretty much on tour for 30 years (laughs) you know Still on tour, great. Yeah, with, actually, yeah, with yeah. A, with a uh, John Mayer, D- Dead and Friends. Now they're called, yeah. and yeah, most of those guys are. Speaking of which, for those of you who like things in Hawaii, the drummer for the Grateful Dead lives in, lives yeah. up the road. It's come, he's watched our show, and we play the Dead song. And it's like we wouldn't un- have played. Un- <laughs> yeah, annoyingly, yeah, we wouldn't have played that if we knew that that guy was in the room because we don't sing all the verses. <laughs> now, the or play the chords right. Or play the chords correctly yeah. Yeah. at that point too. Yeah. Well, he's also the drummer. There's no guarantee. Yeah, you, you missed the four chord. You, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're not being the bag on you right now, dude. <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah. well, yeah, and that, that's an it's it's interesting if you think about it. Like in a situation like that, yeah. where you're coming to see basically like a restaurant or like a bar band mm-hmm. that does that does a lot of covers. It's interesting, like, if somebody like that were to be sitting in the audience, what they're thinking when they hear you start playing it. Like, they're, they're wondering, like, is this part of their normal set or are they playing it because I'm sitting here? Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think I think it's – and I think for a lot of those guys, it, there's actually a lot of kind of gratification for both thoughts. Yeah. You know, if it's like, wow, that's just part of their set. Like, they like our music enough yeah. that they included that in their set. Mm-hmm. Or – there's also about a good amount of gratification to think like, wow, they knew I was here, so they're gonna play a dead song. <laughs> yeah. You know, nice, nice of them to recognize greatness. <laughs> nice, nice, of them, nice of them to recognize. Hey, that's not the right verse. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you like. This is our favorite grateful, or this is our favorite. Um, for Kyle Crater boy Kyle song, Crater voice. <laughs> yeah. friend of the devil. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> like, whoa! I know this song. <laughs> I was, I was there. I when was, it, when I, it was written. I went bam, bam, bam in this song. <laughs> our, 
<laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he does. You know, maybe bam, 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 bam. Yeah, I'm sure exactly. Well, like it's that. an inter- <laughs> Grateful Dead is an interesting band because much like the uh, much like uh, what was this band? Almond Brothers. They have two drummers, mm. which is kind of weird because it wasn't. Which I, I don't mean they had a drummer and then a percussion guy. They had yeah. two drum set drummers mm. playing it's all weird. the time. Yeah, is it the huh. same beat or sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> As, as it's like a drum circle. <laughs> one of my one of my heroes is the bass player from The Grateful Dead, and he fully admits he said like you know sometimes that whole idea of like this swirl of music was like amazing and would pick us all up and and move us along, mm-hmm. and sometimes man it just swirled like a toilet, you know, and it was <laughs> awful, you know. So it depends on what you see. It was see, a bad trip. Yeah. <laughs> well, the interesting part about the dead is... A little too strong that day. <laughs> the interesting part about the dead is more than almost any other band in American history, mm-hmm. you have the ability to not only hear them, but hear like so much of them because the dead was one of the first bands, was really the first band to say, if you have recording equipment, come record our show. We don't oh, care. We uh-huh. want, matter of fact, we want you to do it. And if you went to an old Grateful Dead, I think Dead and Friends still does this, but there is literally like a ticket you can buy for a different section in front. So you can film That's it. the recording oh, that's cool. section. That's uh, cool. That's cool. And back in the day, it was like guys literally showed up with like tape machines and yeah. stuff like yeah, that, yeah, and yeah. sticking microphones. They in. encourage. And that's cool because it, it becomes like a like a highly collectible thing. It's like, oh, do you have the you know the performance from this place? Like, yeah, oh, this, no, they there. played it different here uh-huh. or whatever. That's cool. If any of your fr- yeah. if any of your fans of the Evil Dead, if you can look online, you can still find websites. They're called that, Deadheads. That, yes, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there can, are there's a bunch of them. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you can still find websites that there are guys online who have like hey does anybody have like the wow. pennsylvania show from like 88 you know this, this, awesome. this, 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 this so date on 88 and it. then that somebody else awesome. will come up and like yeah oh, yeah, yeah i do what do you got oh that is and, so and then cool. they'll be like i have you know 1984 in like yeah. ithaca new york and it's like i don't have that one yeah let's trade oh, let's wow. trade those oh, that's files. Awesome. awesome you know what i mean I and have the one from Hotel Room 93. <laughs> I think there were the Grateful Dead. At least that's what they told me. <laughs> <laughs> he was cleaning my room afterwards, but he but, saw my guitar and just started playing. You had a beer. That's all I know. Garcia. Uh-huh. But, you know, that, that's a thing. So the Grateful Dead is probably the most recorded band. That's cool. Almost, in, almost ever. Because if you consider there were probably about 20 or 30 guys recording every show. For the last mm. 30, 40, you know, mm-hmm. 30 years, they were on the road. Yeah. Then how many thousands of recordings like is that? Mm-hmm. All individual, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. All individual, different machines, different qualities, and all okay. stuff like that. So you could totally hear that that night-to-night difference, mm-hmm. you know, in a way that... Even different stages, different settings. Yeah, know, different stages, yeah. different sounds. It's not just different cameras and different equipments and it's, stuff. Yeah, it's different everything. Yeah. And different mood, you know? Yeah. If you're in a different mood, oh, it's cool. It's like, do you have the one where he messes up on this? Guy? <laughs> mm-hmm. God, I'm sure. People, yeah, they're right. Yeah. You know, no one plays it perfectly every day. Like, that's right. So that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so if you are Grateful Dead fans, or if you're not, actually, you should check them out because I mean, yes, some of their stuff is really out there and really trippy. But one of the cool things about the Dead is they were able to go from these weird psychedelic trip songs to like actually just really cool pop songs. Mm-hmm. You know, Touch of Grey. If you've ever, if you've seen that video, it's the one where they're playing on stage and all of a sudden they're replaced by like marionette skeletons. <laughs> I love that song. It's a little too weird. <laughs> Friend of the Devil is a cool one. Um, dark, the well, Dark Star starts to get kind of out there. Mm-hmm. Trucking from the old days. It's the cool part is you watch that evolution mm-hmm. in I, that band. I think for a lot of musicians though, who are like, it's like, oh, those musicians are really weird. But the idea or like. I think people don't realize is like they choose to be really weird. Uh, like they, they have the skill sets to be like, Oh, I can totally make a, a normal pop song, mm-hmm. but I want to make something that is like out yeah. there instead. Yeah. Right. It's more well, like closer I mean, to Frank Zappa. Mm. Frank Zappa was a good example. I mean, his stuff is in no way pop. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he would write basically offensive lyrics. He would write <laughs> weird music, super technical music yeah. that, that you know i mean he had a he had a famous audition piece called the black page mm-hmm. 
that basically looked like you just took like a super soaker <laughs> with ink and went <laughs> <laughs> and and that was the audition to get yeah. into his band and that's why Steve Vai was so good you, the fun, you, funny enough <laughs> the first time Steve Vai saw that he said oh I don't know if I can play this and Frank Simmons said what good are you then <laughs> well, <laughs> well get out of here <laughs> he's like yeah get out of here get out of here so, like, like, so then it was so uh, like that challenge yeah. kind of like hit Steve Vai was like mm. oh okay yeah. you wanna, <laughs> yeah. fine give me that thing Jeez. <laughs> I saw pieces of that music. It's like there's like this one, um, it's like on one beat. There's like seven. Like, seven. <laughs> what the what? Yeah, yeah. A seven <laughs> couple. Yeah. What what is that? <laughs> what is yeah. that? It's... I've never seen one of those in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> not since clarinet. Music. Uh, no, not since then. No. Yeah. It's like so, what is what? <laughs> yeah. For those of you, septuplet. Um, septuplet. Like, yeah. How do you count that? Um, basically, if you go. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's one, two, three, crazy. Five, <laughs> you just have to divide the beat into seven. Seven, seven. seven. Yeah. equal, seven oh, equal parts <laughs> in seven. Yeah, it, it's the same thing as a triplet. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you're taking and like... Fit the three. Right. Yeah. You, get seven, you get four and then three. It's it's messy. You just do it. Right. Yeah, you just do it. And then it doesn't work like if you're counting like seven, yeah. eight times, which mm-hmm. is you either go one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, mm-hmm. one, two, or one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. It's not that. Because even by saying that in those sections, mm-hmm. you are implying a, a a kind of like where accents are falling. Or it's like uh, three four, right? Three four is just waltzy, like one yeah. two three, one two three. Right. So the ac- that accent is always on one. Yeah. So we even when you're going one two three, one two one two, you're still counting seven, but it's like one two three, one two one two. Yeah. And that's where your accents are falling. So. With <laughs> it's the, crazy to the, think there are axes in that seven and that one beat. Like, make sure you accent these. It's like I'm just gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, and, then, <laughs> and then the, and the hard part is then you have to figure out what the composer was thinking because he was. It's three ways to do seven eight. It's either one two three one two one two one two three one two one two or one two one two one two three one two one two one two three one two one two one two three or. One two one two three one two one two one two three one two one two one two three one two. It's too much beats for me. <laughs> Let's get to the down chunk up. <laughs> I can't even do that. <laughs> so this is probably a lot deeper than most of you are tuned in for. <laughs> but you know, so you know, well, maybe, uh, maybe you use it as a yeah. composition tool. Who knows? Yeah, we we do have uh, uh, some other questions. Sure. sure. Uh, so this one is from Mark, the guy who is like, oh, I want to be Hokage. Yeah. Okay, Mark. Um, yeah. <laughs> and he says, I have a question for the Thursday live lesson. Do you guys have any parallel modes that you favor when you're playing a song? Uh, uh, for instance, the key of G, like G Mixolydian or G Dorian. Hmm. Do you think more about tonal centers when you solo? And then he also added on, I'm just curious if learning parallel modes, arpeggios, etc., is meant to train your ears and muscles, muscle memory. Hmm. It just seems impractical to actually be thinking about all this theory while you're playing uh what do you think about that how do you get from i'm playing g dorian to i want to feel like we are in tijuana dancing the samba Uh so well uh, so first of all if you're in tijuana dancing a samba that's a good time you are in a very strange club (laughs) oh i mean yeah yeah strange sorry (laughs) it's it's a good time (laughs) mike's like if you go to mexico and you find someone place to do a brazilian dance you have found an interesting club. You my have drank the but, worm on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom but let's, go, bottom. let's go. Let's go. backwards from that, um, because more for the soloing yeah. thing. That, that's more of an answer for that you could do. Yeah. Um, how do you get from there to there? Uh, so to answer your question, it is just practice. It is to train your muscle and your, muscles of your hand as well as the muscles of your ear. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because much like with when you're trying to solo over anything, there is going to be a quote unquote right sound. Okay. Now here's the thing that has a lot to do with you. Okay. The way, like if you hear me take a solo and you hear him take a solo, it's not just stylistic differences, obviously, because he has a lot of stylistic differences in the way he solos and I do. Mostly though, what the difference is, is that the type of things he hears is based off of all the scales and chords and things that he has worked with over his life. Mm-hmm. Whereas how I do it is based on what I've heard and what I what I have gravitated to. Now the truth is, me and him have both probably heard all the same things. But how I've interpreted that into my 
concept of soloing is different than his. Mm -hmm. And so that's where understanding why you would use, well, G Dorian and a G Mixolydian, I mean, those, those are actually both in different keys too. Because remember that when we're talking about modes, each key has seven modes. So a G Dorian means that that's the key of A, okay? Mm -hmm. And a G Mixolydian means it's the key of C, okay? So in, in essence, you're talking about soloing in two different keys here. So um, is it important to learn them? Like, is it important to learn the G in every place it is a mode? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And the reason is, is if you're playing in that particular key, then you're hearing what could be used, mm -hmm. okay? And again, like I said, music theory, the whole purpose of music theory is to understand what you were listening to. So if you have a sound in your head, if you have a, a lick in your head that you wanna get out, but you have no idea, it's like, say it's a lick in your head that's real complicated, mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be hard to get out, but if then you start to realize, okay, well, I'm hearing this key. Oh, okay, wait, I'm hearing this scale. You're, you're starting to like slough away the the excess notes yeah. and you're the starting to- that it's yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, you're figuring out what it's not, so mm -hmm. you can, it helps you quickly figure out what it is, yeah. so what you can mm -hmm. do with it. Because like you can narrow down <clears> the <throat> notes from like all the notes to like, oh, it's if it's a key, it's like, oh, there's eight notes yeah. or seven notes, yeah. right? That I can so use. if I so if, here's a good example. If I'm hearing, if I realize that what I'm he hearing is in the key of C, okay, but I hear it in a minor way, then I realize that most likely I'm talking about a three chord. Mm -hmm or two chord or mm -hmm. six chord. Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's the mode that that lick is kind of based off of because that's the those are the modes that would then imply like a minor sort of use. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now which of those three modes? Well, they're all minor and they're all in the key of C. So that's that's more of training that ear thing so you can kind of figure out where that's supposed to where that where that lies. You know? <clears throat> It, there's no better explanation for why we learn music theory than that. It's just so that you can, so that you can just get rid of all the yeah. excess yeah. and figure out what it is you're hearing yeah. faster you're than with? not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as uh, soloing and, um, and and using different modes and stuff, you can really just narrow it down to two, which is the major and the minor relative. Is from what I see, especially with the ukulele, because um, you know, <clears throat> our major, we would have you know the normal. And then you would have that same that same thing with uh but when you know in, in a minor so whenever i think of solos um i just think of those two things and if you've ever seen solo six revealed i've done what is the fifth one called fifth mode fifth mode mixolydian so yeah so i always think of mixolydian so like um <clears throat> so those three so if i'm gonna go for one more i would think mixolydian which is what we uh, taught in solo six revealed where we have the zero two zero one three zero two three and then up here in the Mixolydian, we would have 0201 I think in Solo Secrets, we also include the fourth, too. Yeah, yeah okay. The fourth <clears throat> mode. So, you know, in a, oh, just to, just to bridge from the one. You know, one to five. five. Yeah. yeah. So, if you, even just going from the regular, you know, regular scale, the major scale, to, to the Mixolydian scale, um, that should be, you know, that should be good. And that's the one that I use the most, just like the regular Mixolydian. Sometimes I'll, you know, like I'll, I'll mix up some uh, some notes in there. And there's definitely like some uh, explanations on how we would get those notes. But just like what Mike said, like if I'm doing a solo, then I then become the composer of that solo. Whatever sounds good to me is going to sound good. So I'm going to play the notes in, you know, in between. So I'm going to play it. Those, those are the ones that I'm, uh, those are the notes that I'm going to try to hit. But at the same time, I have this note, this note, this note, this note, this note that, you know, that I'm going to try to put in there that are not in the scale. So those are, you know, if I'm going from here to here from the zero to the two, why don't I just pass just like with Mike, you know, saying that, you know, you're going, you're going home or you're going towards a destination. You can take a, you know, you can take a side trip and stuff. You can take a side trip to the one and then go to the two. So instead of going, you can always go. And it sounds okay, you know? And um, if I'm doing it with the Mixolydian scale, I can try to, you know, hit those hit those notes that I'm not supposed to and try to make it work 
um, by either resolving up or resolving down and um, just picking what sounds good. I mean, yeah. Honestly, is, is what it is. And sometimes those uh, those dissonant notes and dissonant chords and stuff actually sound really awesome. Depends on uh, where you're putting them in. Well, as we talked to, you know, a lot of the things with chord extensions and so mm -hmm. is adding tension. Yeah. yeah. Because the human ear likes to hear tension as long as it's released. Result. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So so what you so basically what you're doing is when you're adding in those a little further away mm -hmm. from the straight key notes, mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're just adding some tension in mm -hmm. that when you finally resolve it back to the root mm -hmm. or back into the scale. It's like that, like a roller coaster. You just yeah, and a yeah. Couple, those little, those little. Yeah, we uh, we were bumps. just doing a a play along earlier with uh, with a couple of friends of mine, and uh, you know we're doing this kind of jazzy Hawaiian song and stuff, and it's in G. You know, it's the key of G. So I'm automatically thinking, these are my go tos and stuff. But then, like from here, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start it off with this nice kind of bluesy kind of sounding, you know. So I start out with that. Where I'm going one, two, and then a half, and back to two, and to back one. to yeah, just so you know, like we're just. I want it to sound jazzy or bluesy and stuff, and I know blues they have a lot of those tension notes that they also have that devil's note in the, in, oh, their, yeah. in in blues and stuff. I want to kind of tease that a little bit because it sounds jazzy. The chords are uh, like major seven to the um, minor, or the three minor seven to minor seven to the five seven so so if it's sounding like like that i'm gonna i'm not gonna be like what which it sounds okay but i want to complement the chords that you know that the guitar player is giving me so i'm like okay i need to kind of be playful with it a little bit so instead of going i can do Where I'm just like adding that, like that tension, right? You can hear it already. Right? It's like mm -hmm. it's not there. But if I resolve to that two and go to the one, mm -hmm. so that's basically it. That's my, you know, that's my one, uh, my regular, my regular major scale. And this is my, you know, my mixolydian down here. Yeah. I, uh, another part of the the question, or like what Mark said, was. Um, uh, it just, it seems impractical to actually be thinking about all this theory while you're playing. Yeah, and I think that's like it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's well, like yeah. having a lot of to. I mean, we we've said this before. Like in theory, in learning theory, and understanding theories, is having a like a toolbox. And the more theory you learn, like the more tools you know that, that you get in your toolbox. But it's not like you're gonna use all you know like you're gonna use a hammer and a whatever just so you can fix a light bulb you know? like you're gonna use the necessary oh, tool yeah. yeah right <laughs> I, th I think <laughs> the thing this like light bulb and a hammer first the thing with playing yeah. too is like if you're thinking while you're playing mm -hmm. like that's already too slow yeah, yeah. Right. like and you're gonna it's gonna come out in your music like right. you're I'm doing it right now by not speaking like eloquently, <laughs> but it's gonna sound like that, right? Yeah. Like you're like, uh, uh, uh. He's just, doing it on purpose know. to illustrate that point. Yeah, <laughs> it's not because <laughs> <not, it's laughs> I'm terrible yeah. at speaking. Kahai is way ahead of you guys yeah. with this, <laughs> but no, he's he's exactly right. That's mm -hmm. spot on. Is that you know, it's it's much like you know when you started playing ukulele, you had to think about how to put your hand mm -hmm. into a C chord and an F chord and a G seven mm -hmm. and every other chord. Now you don't. Mm -hmm. What because it would be impractical for you to have to think about my third finger goes here. Right. This it's too slow. It's it's no. too slow. It's too slow. But <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's too slow. By the time you've thought about it, it's gone. So when it comes to the music theory stuff, understand that most of us who do use this stuff in our solos and our playing, we are not thinking about it. Mm. It is integrated so so much into what I do, what I know. Now as a bass player I'll just give you the example why, how, and I use this. As a bass player in a jazz format, mm. I'm usually not given like note for note words. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm not. I'm given chords. Okay? Which means that I have to know the scale that it comes from. Mm. It means that I have to know the, the, uh, the chord tones, mm. which are the strongest notes that a bass player should be playing. And I have to understand how all that works. And the thing is, I can't stop to think about, you know, 
A minor. So A minor is A, B, C, D, E, M, G, A. <laughs> if I stop to think yeah. about that, the song's already gone. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think... Bus. <laughs> I'm just the bus, bro. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's, like, the misconception with some people who try to learn skills and stuff. Mm-hmm. Is that they, they, they think the way that they learn skills is how they're going to apply it to actually playing. But then it is, like, you, you don't want to be playing and thinking about, like, Oh, I'm going to play A, I'm going to play G, I'm going to play F, I'm going to play... Yeah. Like, if you're thinking about note names, it's too slow where it should just be like you are you already know the tones of the notes that will sound good. And just exactly. like you're aiming for that. Or you're... you're I don't think... I, I don't think it's really thinking at all, right? It's just like kind of... No, like you, I mean, yeah. it's almost like... Well, it's thinking like on a subconscious level. Like... It's like your brain is already going like, I hear this, this works. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. without... Without having to process through your conscious part of your mind, your hands can just start moving. Mm-hmm. Like if anything, you're imagining what it sounds like, right? Yeah. And your your you know, hand I is like, playing it. Yeah. Like when I look at a chord, when I look at a chord ch- uh, chart for for any tune I'm gonna play, I already kind of hear what it's gonna sound like in my head mm-hmm. before we get started. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and the, and the thing is, I understand that as you're going through all these modes and chords and scales. It can totally seem like there's so much here. Why am I learning all this? You know, I, mean? I can play it's one hour. So much. <laughs> and there's like an explanation for everything. Yeah. And and I get that. Yeah. Because trust me, I thought the same thing. <laughs> I remember sitting in music theory class, going like, why do I have to yeah. write out every why? mode and every chord and every scale? And, uh, and trust and and yes, I get it. It mm. it can be boring. Here's the thing. Don't if you try and tackle all the modes sort of things at once, mm. it's going to be such a wave of information that you will screw yourself up. It will be yeah. impractical for you to use because you'll you'll achieve what I call mm-hmm. paralysis by analysis. Mm-hmm. And you'll be thinking so much about what you're doing yeah. that you don't actually do anything. Yeah. So here's my advice to you. Yes, pick a key. Pick those seven modes. Do yourself a play along. Record yourself. And then see about using those modes in that one key and see about how that works. Mm -hmm. Once you've understood how that works, the other 11 keys will actually start to fill themselves in for you. Okay. You'll uh, you'll hear how a Dorian mode works over a minor chord. You'll understand how Phrygian mode or Lydian mode or mixed Lydian mode works over the chord it's supposed to go with. And when you understand that, it's more, it's not like you're understanding this particular scale and these particular notes works well because of this, this. Mm-hmm. It's almost like just the the big picture kind of opens itself up to you. Mm-hmm. I Yeah, I think you, you definitely like, you go from, it's like the names, right? Names of chords, scales, and things to just like tones. Like you just hear something in your head. You're like, oh, that that would work, you know? Yes. And it's like, or I, I think that's that's like, before I worked here, that's like how I would play where it's like, Oh, I just want to play this, but I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's called a Dorian or a Mixolydian. It's just like, oh, I know these notes yeah, sound good. Yeah, like at this exactly. point, yeah. And see, the thing is now, now you're on the other end of it, so you understand a bit more of it. Mm-hmm. And the thing, the, the the cool part now is that now not only do you understand how that sounds and how it's used, but now when you hear that kind of thing in your head, it's immediately you can identify that and it's like, oh, okay, the cool solo mode for this chord would be a Dorian mode. Mm-hmm. You can hear that, and then it's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, that's what works. So immediately, then, if you integrate it into your head, that's when you can start fooling around with that mm-hmm. because your hands will automatically go to that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I think, like, yeah, and I think that's, like, the goal, right? More so than, like, I think some people get stuck in, like, oh, I got to know the name of all the notes mm-hmm. in these different scales and stuff, and they're writing it down and stuff instead of just, like, practicing mm-hmm. and, like, listening for tones and, like, it's a little bit of both Mm -hmm. you know if you want to be able to explain it to somebody yeah Yeah. now here's the thing if you don't need to ever explain it to somebody except yourself Mm. then maybe you don't need to know all the names (laughs) you know what I mean it's it's, for it's like a communication tool right if you're gonna play with other people exactly and Mm -hmm. you need to explain what's going on but if you're doing like a solo deal for just yourself and you understand what you're doing then no need 
you can get away with it. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, you know, but, speaking English and stuff. Like, yeah. oh, you know, it, I... If this is a pronoun and this is a noun. Like you don't Are, need to know what to just to speak. You know? Like yeah. the like kids, right? Like kids learn by just like being around mm-hmm. other people, mm-hmm. and they just learn how to start talking. Mm-hmm. But then they they only learn how to like read and what they're actually saying when they go to school. And then the yeah. teacher points out like, oh, you're using an a and you're mm-hmm. using an e and like breaking yeah. it down into that sense. Yeah. yeah. And then, and you know it, it's kind of the same thing with music. Most of us start music playing. Now, how long that goes before you actually maybe start to put some technic- technical terms to that, lessons, etc. Sometimes that can be a few weeks, a few mm-hmm. months, mm-hmm. sometimes a few years. It doesn't really matter because it is just like learning how to read. Like when you read, mm-hmm. you okay, and to use that analogy, when you read, you don't have to think about what the pronoun and the noun and the <laughs> verb is. Mm-hmm. But if I asked you in a sentence, well, what's the pronoun? Mm-hmm. what's the noun mm-hmm. what's the verb or like any of you could tell me that because you can you don't have to think about it while you're reading because all that information is already in your hand yeah it just but happened. if i asked you what it was you, you, you could, could also backtrack but yeah, yeah but you could also out. do yeah. that because yeah. oh well yes, okay we're talking about a guy sad. that's yeah. that's the that's the noun yeah, this is the sentence structure oh. <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. you can or, do all that and it's kind of the same thing with music you're you're hoping to get to yeah. the point where you just read or solo or mm-hmm. whatever without thinking without having to really think about the content mm-hmm. of the parts. You just have to know. Like I don't think about what's the pronoun and the noun when I'm talking to you right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You but just... if you but if you asked me what it was, I could mm-hmm. tell you. Yeah. Or if you're you're reading, it shouldn't be like I'm reading it. It's a p p l e. <laughs> it's like no, you just say apple. <laughs> you just read the word yeah, for it. it what it is? Yeah. Oh, this is an apple, and it is the noun of the sentence. <laughs> and then I will continue on with the sentence. Yeah. No, you don't think like that. You yeah. don't do that because you don't have to. And hopefully, where you're going to get to in music mm-hmm. with some of that practice is to that point where notes and chords and rhythms just kind of flow through your head. Mm-hmm. And if someone says like, "Hey, man, what is that?" Yeah, you can turn on like, oh, well, I'm doing this. Yeah, there, mm-hmm. like, but you don't have to. Yeah. There's you like not a to. buffer where it, it almost takes like a translation, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> see, that's what it <laughs> yeah. is. It's yeah. just like you yeah. want it to be kind of like always getting faster. Where it's like, right. oh, I'm well, I'm, it's gonna be that period with music where you're like, well, this is a <laughs> major scale, and it's um. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do that all the time because <laughs> I use the capo on the guitar and it's like, yes. what key are you in? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm holding this chord, but the capo's on like four, so, <laughs> so. <laughs> I got to count up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, where you're you're playing um, around this this month? You know, you're, you're playing music for a bunch of different places. Maybe mm-hmm. you can. Uh, maybe someone's visiting Kauai this month and they would like to see you. I know people have kind of asked us, like, oh, we're going to be here this day. So where can they see you this month? Okay. So um, I know you're busy. You're busy Saturday, yet? I'll be at Kilohana, uh, Kilohana Lua House, playing yeah. the annual Choir Sings fundraiser. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who are fans of South Park, um, <laughs> if you remember that one scene when they went to Kauai and there was that big luau hut that they, they had the, the big <laughs> meeting in. The hapaloa. But, yeah, so <laughs> it's in there. That's the <laughs> Although it's actually called Kilohana, not Smith's Tropical Blue. <laughs> Isn't? But that that's that place is only for locals, right? <laughs> you need your Mahalo, Mahalo Rewards, Rewards card. card. Yeah, yeah. Mahalo yeah. Rewards card. I can also <laughs> stop at uh, Kawamoto Simon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where else are you playing? Um, next week. Uh, let's see. So, so that's uh, Saturday the eighth, mm. Sunday the ninth. Uh, I'm doing a orchestra concert with Kauai Community College. That's mm-hmm. Sunday at four o'clock at the community college's uh, theater. It is a free concert. Um, we're playing uh, Ch- uh, Tchaikovsky Symphony, American Folk Rhapsody, a bunch of bunch of pretty cool songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the following Saturday, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many that I have to think about this, guys. Yeah, hold on. Oh, what uh, about? Oh, oh fall, uh, the following Friday, uh, we'll be back at that, and it will be the Wind Symphony and the Jazz Ensemble. Okay, so good, man. You're a busy, you're a busy guy. Well, thank you so much because you're so busy. You know, thank you for 
joining us once Stuff again in, on yeah. a Thursday Anytime. live lesson. We yes. got so <laughs> we gotta have you back when we're doing like the song challenge. So yeah. have you? Yeah, so have okay, you. so try so, so here, here here's the thing: the next whatever the next challenge is, somebody text me the details. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. All right, oh, nice. Oh, nice, nice, yes, yes. 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 That's been you, huh? That's been you. Yeah. No, no, just joking. I'll we'll, we'll play it on <laughs> bass. <laughs> My controversy pillow. Like, from you, well, music and sound. You scared? <laughs> eight, two, three, eight thousand. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Thursday Live Lessons. We'll see you guys next time. Of course, stick around for songs made easy, and stick around after that for one-on-one coaching. But on behalf of everyone here at Ukulele Ground, Aloha.